so welcome everybody uh welcome to uh my lovely guests again today siri from norway louisa from portugal and suzanne from uh from canadia as we like to call it over here so this is the the 12th soul waves lecture I, as i said before i think lectures this very um it's probably over egging what they're about because they're just becoming uh conversations but mindfully today and timefully we uh discussed or we we agreed to do this on the winter solstice uh this turning point between uh getting into the dark and coming out into the light it takes a few days for it to come into the light again which is interesting uh but this point on the we're all northern hemisphere this point where our days start to get lighter uh, in the southern hemisphere it it reverses obviously uh but welcome everybody so yeah we're, and i guess also this is the it's the it's the 12th month as well so uh obviously with louise you're a resident uh astrologer so i'm sure you've got some views on it uh siri you've got uh, the, the dark at the moment you're in the darkness uh because up in the arctic circle it doesn't get light at all and how far are you uh, suzanne from the arctic circle Quite, quite low. We're just on the north. We're north of the 49th parallel. So if you think of the Canada and the U.S. border is, we're okay. a little bit that. We're northern shore of Lake Ontario. So it's so would that there. would that be like about Scotland over in that or that kind of area over in the U.K.? 49? I think Scotland's actually further north. Is it? Um, okay. Yeah. So Canada is actually longer than it is wide. We think of it okay. as being wide this way. But yeah. in fact, this way is... Um, longer yeah it's a big country very very big so before we talk about you know the, the day and what's going ahead now could you share um with me what your highlight to be i'll start with siri what's the highlight of, of this last orbit of the sun being for you did you get that siri Sorry, I didn't. You chopped up all of you. If okay. You and then so the question, the question was uh, talking about we, we're talking about. I want to talk about the day and the, the significance of the solstice and what our plans are for the next orbit of the sun. What's your highlight been from this last orbit of the sun? Uh, I must say, uh, speaking to you, that the uh, creation of the Tarot Standing Deck will be the highlight for me because that, to me, it represents personally the involvement and uh, rebirth of me and coming to my 49th this year was really really a, a big uh, light point in, uh, in my life so i had and also gaining some clarity about how i want to create my music and also change I think a bit from being or and I'm losing you. I, I hope you don't lose me. <laughs> so that would be the memorables from this year. Also, Fantastic. peace and quiet returning into our family. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, I don't know. Like me, this is the, the last last creative act of this uh, of this this year before we, I go into holiday as well. How about you, Suzanne? What's been your highlight? It's been a huge year for my family. Very much grounding. Uh, some severe illnesses that were miraculously cured. Uh, finding family members we didn't know existed. Uh, losing my mother. So it's been um, at the ripe old age of 100. Um, but it's been this flow of generations and this flow of grounding. So for mm -hmm. me, it's been a very um, important year and a new baby on the horizon, which is just so exciting. So all things come, all things go. You know, that's been very, yeah. very... Uh, fluid for me also um connecting with you more and with siri um and finding uh, sort of what's next for me um connecting with the uh, psychic community um of which i've always been an involuntary member so it's been a, a great transition so i'm so glad we're doing this on the solstice because for me it's a great roll around so mm -hmm. the, the the brightest stars shine on the darkest nights which right now is now right so yeah it's been a great year <laughs> fabulous year insane year there you go louisa <laughs> <laughs> um well uh, before i share actually um how i've been over this last month i'd like to share that today's date is interesting um you know like tom when i first met you we were getting ready or thinking about like um uh solstice or 20th of the 12th um 2012 
or mm-hmm. the 21st of the 12th, 2012. Yeah. And of course, we've actually got the same numerology today. Instead of it being like 2012, it's 2021. Yeah. yeah. The numerology today is the 21st, two plus one is three. Of the 12th, one plus two is three, yeah. 21. Two plus one is three. So we've got a three, three, three number today, which I think is quite interesting because I love um, power numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, lots of people see 33s or 22s or 11s, but, you know, we've got a three, three, three vibration. And it's the same vibration that we had back at the time that we were possibly expecting the Great Awakening to happen mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, all those years ago. And we've actually had to wait a little bit longer. Um, but it really does feel like we are kind of right slap bang in the middle of the great awakening right now it feels like there's a lot going on and in this last month in particular I've um I've craved the dark actually I've um um I stopped doing videos I took my my, um YouTube channel down um to hide it just because I wanted to go into hiding and um for me and a lot of the clients I've been working with the, the big question at the moment is why why am I here what am I doing what is my why the the thing that gets me out of bed every day like why um and and really getting sort of to the core of who I am and then as I was getting a bit clearer about it um and putting my YouTube back to how it was I had the awful experience of realizing that I'd lost all of my subscribers and then I was like well that's a dark night of the soul I've been working hard to build up my community um but it's it's kind of be careful what you wish for it's 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 like facing our fears and um, yes. and, and looking at the work that we've been doing and realizing that actually we need to be content to just let it go. I, you know, I've been thinking, what's, what's the purpose of me doing videos or chat, having these great conversations with people? And what's the purpose? Does anyone listen? And actually the whole purpose of it, from my perspective, is that if, if it's, it's the act of having the conversations is enough. Mm. If people watch, that's fantastic. If nobody watches, it's still a creation and and it is felt in the collective somewhere. So I've come come full circle. <laughs> that's a great realization. <laughs> and our solstice is happening um in London time and in Lisbon time. It goes live at um just before four o'clock this afternoon. Right. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. I think there's some big change coming. Yeah, interesting. Well, I've got two questions actually asked in the Soulbirds group in the week, and uh, I think one of them relates to you three on the basis that I don't have any of these things called children. Um, and this this is a question from a wonderful lady I met this year, Jade Evans, and she says, uh, this is a question for us, do we need to be concerned for the future of our children? What can we do right now to support our children with everything that's going on? And my, my mm. intuition on this was that I think they've got it more stuff than we have, so we'd have to worry about them at all, at all really. But as as mothers and, and grandmothers, what do you uh, what do you think of um, of that question? What do we need? Do we need to be concerned for the future of our children? I think we need to tell them the truth. Yeah. I think we need to let them know that the universe provides, and mm. they are in for a heck of a ride. And as our generation has experienced things that our parents did not, um, that they will have opportunities and experiences that we could have only dreamed of. But the most important thing we have to remember is that experiences are are real. Experience are real. Um, And I I should probably look it up. My son said something the other day. I will look it up. He's about to become a dad himself. Um, But we were talking about the whole idea of... um, the disconnect that we have with respect to um, media, um, to everything being electronic. And what he said, and it, it, it wrote it down because I, I thought it was significant for this generation. He said, we have found a way to short circuit our most authentic experiences. So Is that a short circuit or a bypass almost? Well, a short circuit in some ways. We were talking about social media and everything's a blip and everything's a this and we've lost Mm -hmm. our attention span. So I think the thing that the gift we can give back to our children and our grandchildren is this idea of attention. Okay, Mm -hmm. nice one. Attention. Pay attention. The universe will give you whatever you need, but you need to pay attention. Get your nose out of your phone. Get your butt outside. Play with an animal. Plant a tree. Play in the dirt. And reconnect. It's all there. 
So the, the metaverse that uh, Mr. Zuckerberg is planning is, is the antithesis of that, in which case is more of a retraction away from uh, that reality to a, a false reality. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've said somewhere else in one of the forums, especially on Facebook, Mr. Zuckerberg, if you want to reconnect with your soul, get in touch with me because he's obviously had a, a massive soul disconnection. <laughs> I think you can see it in the photos. He's a different person. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. He's lost behind the eyes, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Anyway, going back to Jade's wonderful question, uh, Siri, what, what's your perspective on uh, the future of our children? I guess I could be someone who really have the opportunity to listen to my children as I have five of them. And that is a very rare thing in our society these days, especially where we live. Uh, not many people have five children, but they represent uh, one of the, the chakras and the connection to the nature that you were mentioning, Suzanne. It's very clear to me that each of them has their role. They may not be aware of it, but speaking, there's voices already. And all, all we need to do is, like you say, give them the attention they deserve and then uh, make sure they know that we're listening to them and tell them the, the truth, like you say. We know things have changed uh, uh, generations and things are to be let go, like you said, Louisa. And certain things we can look at in uh, another perspective, like looking at the future instead of going backwards into the past. Because the generation uh, um, differences between uh, my parents' generations and their parents' generations are uh, bigger than we think they are. And they need to know that they're okay by being who they are and their role in it is to not worry, but know that they have the answers and the different perspectives and different views on things than we have and that's the that's the purpose and everything is to be who you who you are and be you and be what you can contribute to the world and the big change that you were talking about Louisa I'm sure that this our children's generations uh, know this intuitively but yes. they need to know that we see that and I get confirmation all around here goosebumps you're speaking the truth Mm. So just do that and be honest with them, and tell them mm. that you can. Yes, you can speak to the trees. You can speak to the to the nature, and you can speak to the animals. And if you hear something that speaks to your soul, do that, and don't worry about anything because there is always a solution for every problem. And uh, mm. to let go of old knowings and get to, into the new, I can't. Stop rambling I'm hearing <laughs> it's important to get them uh, to know that they are really really important this generation is really important well I also I've, I've shown to some of your children this year Siri and, and uh, yeah. I know yeah. of, I think I've, I knew your children Louisa when they were tiny I haven't really spoken to them as, 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 as people yet but I know that they're all old souls and older souls than, than the people that are older than them, which yes. is kind of interesting. Have you got the same thing going on, Suzanne, in your world? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so they're actually, all they need is a, the mo almost a modicum of support, really, from a, an understanding and, a, and, a, and a, a guiding hand to some extent. And obviously they need the bank of mum and dad as well. <laughs> yeah i mean um this is been, this is one of the things i worry about the most is because my children uh, like what's what's the age of your youngest child siri she he's 12 yeah. this year yeah, yeah well. and um, my, my eldest is 10 and they go down to three and so um I'm at a slightly different stage, which is my mm -hmm. children aren't really able to look after themselves right now. My eldest is getting to that stage, you know, he can make a cup of tea now and he can make a sandwich yeah. and do a few bits and pieces. And over the next couple of years, he's going to go through quite a few big changes. But um, so I've got three, five and, and 10 at the moment. And my biggest um, concern or, or, or thought is that how, how can I keep them safe Um mm -hmm in this world where it looks like you know um there are people that want to um 
um, elect them for particular things that I, I want to have a choice over. I certainly don't want my children to lose their choice over things. So I'm trying to raise them in such a way to give them the choice to breathe and think and, and be themselves. And as a mum, I've been panicking over the last couple of months because it's felt like the world is encroaching on our privacy and, and our rights to raise our children in the way that we want to. Um, and so this is something I've been paying quite a bit of attention to um, because I felt that my role as a mum was to um, give them that space to express themselves. And what's been coming through for me is actually kids pick the families they want to go to. Yes. They know what they're signing up for and they might not consciously know it when they come, but they've got all the skills almost like written into their DNA and they've got all of our experiences written into their DNA. I really believe that the genetic memory of all of our ancestors is captured in our DNA. Um, and all they need to do is, is to trust themselves and to, to feel the reality of the knowledge. I mean, that's how I gave birth to my children. Um, like leading up to each birth, you know, I was connecting in, like going deep inside and saying, I know that every female ancestor that has helped to birth me, I, I know that that wisdom is somewhere inside me. And that was what got me through. Um, and so right now, um, even though I have these wobbles every now and again, I know my children have chosen to come to me and to come into this world at this time. And they will be okay, just like mm -hmm. we are. And they're having their journey. It's not for me to um, prevent them from having difficult experiences. I'm just trying to put those off until they're old enough to deal with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, there, there might come some trauma that I can't hide them from. Or yeah. They might yeah. surprise you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're very level-headed, yeah. actually. <laughs> Carl and I are very sort of emotional. <laughs> they're very level-headed. So, in fact, I'm learning more from them right now. Um, no, as ever. Yeah. 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 Mm. They are. And we're, we're, so thank you for that. Those, those insights. I hope that answers uh, your question, Jerry, if you're <laughs> listening either live or, or on playback. Um, where are we astrologically now, Louisa, on this mm. solstice? What's your well, view? The sun is just about to go into the sign of Capricorn. It's been in the sign of Sagittarius for the last um, approximately 30 days. Um, now, I'm actually seeing um, uh, almost like a return to the, the, the um, Capricorn alliance between Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter mm -hmm. back at the end of 2019, two years ago. We are kind of coming around to that point again of... Um, like two years on from just before the the, the um, particular narrative, um, uh, you know, about illness and stuff around the world was announced. Um, and the planets have all separated. So Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn were tight together, showing the start of something new that had to do with survival, life and death, that had to do with spreading and... Um, and dominating and that had to do with legalities and st structures and things like that and we are now just going into a, a, literally in nine days time Jupiter is is completely um, in a new sign in the sign of um, Pisces Saturn is in the sign of Aquarius and there's a sufficient amount of space between them that we're going to start to notice that this story starts to change and evolve. Jupiter going into the sign of Pisces is a return of our intuition. Our intuition is being knocked off and knocked out for the most part um, because fear, fear overtakes that and it, it prevents us from really connecting in. Obviously, for those of us, um, everyone here who's really super intuitive and, and tuned in, it's actually got stronger for us, I think, because we've we've recognized this and we've sort of practiced our skills. So I, I actually see that people are going to get a lot more intuitive and pay less attention to what they're being told um, and actually start to see themselves as their own authority. Um, because I think we can all do that. It's almost like a return of telepathy. Now, I don't think anyone's going to, you know, I don't think it's a worldwide thing where people are just going to speak to each other telepathically. But I think that sense of knowing is, is coming back to us. Um, and I think that's important. And right now we've got this very strong um, conjunction between Venus and Pluto. Now, Venus is the great healer. She's flowing. She's about generosity and compassion. And Pluto is about um, dominance and control and death. Um, but sort of a, a megalomaniacal control. You know, it's definite control and it's death and decay. Um, 
Pluto is fantastic because, um, you know, if we yield to the idea of death and dying, that's where all the stuff comes out. You know, that's where we resurrect. So there's this very strong theme of resurrection. But Venus went retrograde just two days ago in a conjunction with Pluto. So Venus is giving us the chance to um, rewind some of this narrative, uh, rewind the ideas of death and dying, but actually um, visit it from a place of love and compassion and connection. So irrespective of um, what we're being told by our governments to do, you know, with um, distancing and that we can't trust each other to keep each other safe and things like that, I think that's going to unravel quite quickly um, before our very eyes. Um, and, and Venus is retrograde for the next five weeks. When she goes forwards again, by the 2nd of March, um, she will have gone past Pluto altogether. So I think this time between now and the 3rd of March, 2nd of, and 3rd of March is going to be pretty um, insightful. And also during that time, Mercury is going retrograde too. So we are, the retrogrades, it, when they're in the outer planets like Pluto and Neptune and Uranus, um, it's about um, unwinding things and thinking about things from a different context, from a generation or from a population. But actually, with the Venus and Mercury, they're personal planets. They affect us all individually. So we are unwinding our own context and then reforming it. So I think this is actually a very powerful time. And like we're saying, this is the longest day of the year, the longest night of the year, sorry. And the context is the light is returning. Yeah. I think it's powerful. I'm very excited. Well, that actually leads me very neatly. Thank you for that insight. <laughs> Oh, the insight to say, Louisa. That leads very neatly into the next question that came up. Uh, this is from Maya Francis, and I recommend everyone pops over to Maya's sites and finds her free new meditation called The Void using uh, yours, the music from yours trivia as well. And she, I've not heard it yet, but Siri, you tell me she did a fantastic job of it. She asked a great question uh, What 12 unexpected yes. things? Yeah, she said, What 12 unexpected things should we expect from 2022? And that Ooh. led me to think of the uh, meditation. Uh, the last meditation in the Insertions album, the Meditations on Numbers, I just did, was um, how you channel each of the individual counsellors. And I, I, the answer I've got this for this one, I'll, I'll run around uh, all three of you as well, is that actually all you need to do is ask a counsellor a month or a month, starting mm. with counsellor number one, to show you something ex unexpected. And it will just pop along. I'll run you through a couple of uh, interesting ones. So in the meditation I've just published, I, I go through a, a procedure where you can channel each of the individual counsellors uh, or indeed a combination of the counsellors. So what you can do in, in January, if you like, or from this um, solstice to the, 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 the sort of 29 days in, you could say, well, what, what could I do to bring more unity my way? Mm. in my life and then you be you're shown it so rather than you then trying to find it you get the counselors show it you sometimes they show it you before you've asked the question it was just right in front of you but you didn't spot it then in in month number two or month number two you can ask about um um could you show me where there's uh, a disparateness in in a, di a discontinuity in my in my world where two different things are in play that could be done could, could be brought together into into one so that could actually be just two things that are uh, at odds with each other that then get re resolved or it could be the one and one equaling three you know the stuff that i'm working with siri on where she does some amazing card designs and uh, and i i put uh, i'm writing the book that goes with it that shows you how to overstand Anything. That's an example of the one and one equaling three. So if you just run through uh, what each of the counsellors can do for you, the numerology of the, the one to 12, and you run through that through the next 12 months, that could be a way of inviting the unexpected in or being shown the une unexpected. What are your thoughts on that? I think that sounds fab I think fabulous. It's great fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And the council are there all the time. You know, we just don't realise that they're, they're this unseen loving force. Uh, they're also wanting to experience this, uh, what we call reality, on their behalf as well, because they're, they're also uh, for discovering what can be done in this uh, in this new reality. I think it comes I, 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 oh, sorry. attention. Oh, sorry, Louise. Sorry. It's about paying attention. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to, right? It's about getting our noses out of our electronics, even though... There's such a blessing, 
that the four of us can sit here today, different time mm -hmm. zones, different places in the world, and have a real-time conversation. And we can't, I think that's the gift that we've been given during this whole COVID thing, is mm -hmm. able to connect in ways that we didn't think it was possible. Um, it's funny, uh, this morning I, I did, a, did a meditation earlier, and it was, it was alive, and it was talking about this idea of connection, and it doesn't really matter. It's all in the ether. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. other half, of, the other half of what you were saying, Tom, is we asked the council. But to me, the yeah. five most important words are, "How can I help?" You know. Mm -hmm. So, what is the lesson from each of the twelve councillors? But how do I manifest that? Because as much as you know, they are, we have this presence. We are the universe trying to understand itself. We are star stuff, and so mm -hmm. we have an obligation uh, to reciprocate and say. What can I do? How can I help? What is what is the lesson that that, that you can give me from this? And how can I, I how can I pay that forward? How can I um, um, assist in this enlightening, which is happening? It's starting starting to happen exponentially. It's it's like this bloody virus. You know, it was a little bit, and now it's a big bit, and now it's getting a bigger bit. And I think to me, that's it. It's not just paying attention to what's being said, but how you can take that and how you can reciprocate that and how you can move everything forward. But that's just my thoughts. I I I like all of your thoughts um, for different reasons. Um, I had my birthday yesterday and usually I get a little bit um, maudlin around the time of my birthday and I think, oh, what have I done this year and have I achieved much? Um, but over this last month and a half, I've really been um, putting myself through a kind of home-based retreat. <laughs> and actually, when um, I woke up yesterday, it was with a sense of optimism and lightness. And I realized that actually what I'm dedicated to now is to making a difference. If, I, if, if by the end of every day I've managed to help, something or add to the collective goodness um then that's a job well done it, it occurred to me that our life is um so fleeting sometimes and and it occurred to me what would i what would what's my legacy and and does it matter if nobody knows about it um and yeah i realize it doesn't matter if anybody know. i'd like my kids to kind of know what i'm about um but actually if they don't know it they'll still feel it at some level and so for me now, um, how can I help is a really strong, um, a strong idea. I, I like that you put that to us, Suzanne. Um, but I don't have to ask that anymore. I just think, okay, what am I supposed to be doing today? Because I feel it. The, I, I'm guided to it. I love what you said, Siri, about we can ask the trees, the plants, the stones, wh whatever. Um, you know, and, and your idea of asking the council. Um, I often just put the question out there like what am I supposed to be doing or and I, I just let the question hang in the air whatever I'm thinking and I know it will get answered from whatever is nearby even if it's just a cup like what would a cup do right now um something I used to teach when I used to um teach business and problem solving we used to get um a big old yellow pages and I would say okay think about your question that you need some help on and then just use flick through the yellow pages um, and find the business there and you say okay so how would a funeral director work with this or you could do superhero problem solving how would superman resolve this problem how would so i think putting that to the council to the plants to ourselves to i think we just need to keep asking um and we will hear whatever we need to hear and yeah there you go a bit of a long-winded answer <laughs> Oh, that's what's great. Well, and remember that the, the, the council is the trees, the plants, and the stones. Exactly, and the yeah. And, the cup and, and what have you. Yeah. So, but it's interesting that just that idea about attention, and I, I'm increasingly, talk about telepathy, increasingly, I've always had this a thought comes in, and literally then the phone rings, or an email comes in, or a letter comes through the door. And it's the, it was the thing I was just wondering, I wonder where that's going to arrive. Yeah. And then the thought comes in, and literally it arrives a few seconds later. So this this connection, this temporal connection, is definitely uh, being very pervasive at the moment. And but it just, uh, I did a, a thing last week, uh, an actual live meditation class, and um, I went to I, I went as a as a meditator, not as the person running it, which is fascinating. Um, <laughs> and so I went to look at it, and it was interesting looking at everyone in the room, and how unmeditative most people were. <laughs> How unmeditative they were, and then by the questions that were asked at the end, I could see that they they were looking for something, but they were hoping that the meditation guide was going to give them the wisdom. 
as mm. opposed to what this guy did. He was a Buddhist monk. He was saying, actually, you just got to go quiet. And he, he, he took people through a procedure to get the mind to go quiet. And when the mind is quiet, then the answer appears or gets revealed and what have you. Mm. So, and, and, and my, my, he was a Buddhist monk, this guy. So his approach is the Buddhist approach, which is this, this practice. Mine is the technologist and, and meditation nerd, if you like, as well. See it as a tool, see it as a tool set. And then the answers come come from it and they want me to host next month's one interestingly enough and then i'll have i'll i'll do a, it'll be about meditation but I'll, it'll be from a tom perspective of how do we use this tool to get the answers to come in and those answers can be the creative stuff that we're doing siri with the with the tarot deck or the the stuff you do you got your insightful stuff uh, louise with the with astrology again you have to use astrology as a tool it's not the thing is it it's just no, the, it's not the it's thing the, it's the, just my way in <laughs> And, and Suzanne, you're, successfully enough. <laughs> and, and Suzanne, you're 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 a wise woman. Obviously, this is your this is your thing. And what do you use as your keys? Mm, it's interesting. I have, as you know, a body of work like 20, 20 years worth of stuff. And I it came to me. Um, thank you. Not a lot on there right now, Tom, but there will be um, because. A lot of the wisdom that I thought wasn't important to your point, Lisa, did it matter? Mm. Well, yeah, it did because it's out there in the ether, right? So um, recycling a lot of that stuff and, and looking at old wisdoms and saying, yeah, this stuff is still valid. So getting a lot of that up there, but mostly writing this year, I think for me is going to be, um, uh, which is my strongest voice, I guess, and mentoring young people. I've got a couple of groups that I'm mentoring, oh. a couple of climate activists. Yes. Um, and they, they astound me, to your point, Louisa, and to yours as well, Siri. These kids are astounding. In these 18, 19 year old kids who are writing letters to the editor, they're making the front page of the paper, just amazingly brilliant young people, um, and helping to preserve and protect a wetland. Again, this idea of what is the knowledge that you have? And how can you apply it? How can I help? I guess it's going to be my mantra for 2022. Wow. Yeah. And I suppose I should share what uh, Siri's going to get up to next year because, and we've just discussed before this broadcast, we're not going to hang around. We're going to produce an actual deck of cards, but Siri's worked out that she can have a deck of cards in her hand just by using a printer. And Siri's going to be doing um, card readings. But the Fantastic. Card, but the card readings are interesting because all you've got to do is mix things up a bit. The, the, the the, the tarot of overstanding, um, the tarot itself describes us as uh, uh, nine-dimensional beings having this three-dimensional experience. But once you add another level of 11 dimensions, so then you're sitting above the nine-dimensional being, it gives you this amazing overstanding. So it's almost like putting putting yourself in the position of the counsellors, sort of sitting above, pulling the strings and what have you. It's probably no accident that I spent a year channeling the council. All of a sudden, I'm now coming up with this project from the position of the council, but stuck in the 3D. And the issue with that, of course, is that we're stuck in this 3D when actually we can't visualise the higher dimensions. But you can when you create a, a, de a deck of cards that show them. And so t traditional spreads are very linear, whereas these spreads are almost like uh, multidimensional in their own right. And we'll obviously be invoking the, the wonderful cube will be coming back in next year, but the cube will be coming back as a hypercube, as a tesseract. Uh, yeah. Siri does this amazing drawing that, that shows how this looks like. And that's the master key, isn't it, in the, in, in the, in the card, showing how actually we're not just sitting inside a cubic uh, arrangement, we're also in this hypercube arrangement. How do you actually describe that in words? Very hard. But when you've got an amazing artist like uh, Siri, she's actually drawn it, which is just absolutely stunning. So there we are. High, high, multi-dimensional card readings, which gives you another perspective on the world is coming your way uh, next year. Mm. And yeah, talking of which, we unexpected. should also... We should also explain that um, we're going to have a, a month off uh, in January and then we're going to be coming back and having sort of conversations about overstanding from uh, from February onwards. So uh, you're more than welcome to join in in with. Uh, so how do you overstand something? What is the overstanding? And I've always challenged you, haven't I, uh, Louise, to say let's 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 rewrite astrology from the perspective yeah. of other positions in the cosmos. Mm. Yeah. And so then you well, get an um, understanding of it. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, um, astrologically, we can sort of 
play around a little bit. Um, so, for instance, some astrologers, like we, we use um, um, a geocentric model with the Earth in the center and all the planets around the outside, but some astrologers prefer to use a heliocentric with the mm. sun in the middle and the planets around them. Um, and I actually prefer to use all these different tools at different times according to what someone wants to know. But I think um, by putting yourself in a position of um, the heliocentric astrology and where the sun's in the middle and the earth and the moon are appearing in the same house, basically, because the earth is like the moon is so mm -hmm. close to the earth in our model and our understanding. Um, what we realize is our emotions um, really are of no consequence. <laughs> We like um, uh, all of a sudden the chart is not about ourself. You know, we're born into a whole system um, and it, we can see our context from being a citizen of something much bigger than ourselves. So, yeah, we can have a lot of fun with that. Like, I mean, I think earlier, did I do a Mars one for you? I think I did, didn't I? You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think we could, you no, know, we right. can really look at it from uh, some, you know, we can just really expand. I've also um, been looking at the idea of the 13 sign zodiac as well, because um, some astrologers um, use a fucus, which is um, a star sign or a constellation in between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Um, and also some astrologers use sidereal as opposed to um, the, the one that most Westerners Western astrologers use and that that includes the procession of the equinox and moving it on so for instance as a Sagittarian um actually I still am a Sagittarian but some people shift their signs like um you're Scorpio aren't you Siri um yes. I, I imagine some of your planets would be in a fucus if we did I mean so I'm doing some of those birth charts now so I'm doing a combination mm -hmm. as to what the client wants but with the 13th sign um, the 13th sign of a fucus is actually a human and it's a human awakening. Um, and all, all the other star signs, like if you think about Jesus and his 12 disciples, like he's like the 13th member and he's the person that transcends things. And all the other people in that, you know, the lovely um, famous picture of them all having the last supper, all the others are kind of like advisors, but he's the one going through the transformation. And so with the 13th sign astrology, um, you've possibly got the vehicle to find out your ascension plan or your resurrection plan. So, you know, with the, the 12 yeah. sign zodiac, it shows a, a, almost like a mundane version, but with the 13th, it's showing possibly your route to transcendence. So I just think any, any way we, I mean, it's essentially a model, you know, and, and I just think we can apply different models to get different understandings. So that's my astrological overstanding and of course putting in a, um, asteroids as well which are other cosmic bodies mm -hmm. uh, it's just so much we can do but i mean right now mostly i just look at it and and then i realize i've got this channeling place um <laughs> i look at the chart in front of me like literally in front of this screen but actually when i start reading for some reason i'm looking in this direction which is actually reversed so it actually looks like I'm going in this direction and I'm looking beyond the computer. It's almost like there's this floating portal always about arm's length away on my right hand side. And as I look into that direction, I feel stuff come to me. And I think and we've all got. Don't, don't need to create a metaverse because we're already in one. Yeah, yeah, we are. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And we said that uh, or the other thing that came up with this, this meditation class I went to was people saying how evil the internet was and i said well the internet can be used for good things as well so yeah, imagine exactly. like the wonderful insight timer app that gets everyone meditating for free every day yeah. and, this, and these conversations that we're having and so and also with even with mark zuckerberg's uh, version of the metaverse you can do good things with it as well definitely Apart from gambling and porn and all the things that will be you'll be on it <laughs> the, the, the initial killer apps I mean, yeah, when, just, stay away from the cat videos right Exactly. <laughs> I, I like that video. <laughs> um, um, I, I'm really grateful for this, the period that we've just been through this two years, even though it's raised a lot of fear in a lot of people. Um, I realized as I woke up on my birthday yesterday that I wasn't sure if, you know, two years ago when I heard about what was about to happen, I thought I'd never see my parents again. And I haven't seen them in the flesh since then. Mm -hmm. um, but I've 
we've got a much better understanding of each other. We've had the context to have much deeper conversations with each other. And they haven't always worked out very well. So we've been sharing views and mm. kind of like coming up against each other. But um, I'm actually grateful because without the context that we've had to be living in, I wouldn't have had this chance to expand with my parents mm -hmm. or go deeper with my own children. It's yeah. It's been a remarkable time to, to focus. Mm. And again, there's so much. I mean, just to sort of end where we started, the idea that they have, we have absolutely everything at our fingertips. I'm reminded that our smartphones have 10,000 times the computing power of the all of the computers that put men on the moon in our hands. Mm -hmm. And you think of that accomplishment and you think of the power that we, and then we get mad if it takes five seconds to load a video. Like we become mm -hmm. very impatient. And I think that that idea of attention should be married with the idea of patience. Um, it's okay to sit to Louise's point too. We pretty much had two years of sitting, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. it's okay to do that, you know? Yeah, but also about two years of creation. I mean, I've written this yeah. this book that I wasn't planning to write, an album and set of meditations I want. And, and actually, um, along the way, the 13th state was the driver. So the 12 was driving the 13th state. So uh, in, 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 the, in the middle of uh, this, this is actually a 12-sided cube. You know, all cubes have got 12 sides. And right in the center of the cube, which you can't readily see with your eyes, is the 13th state. This is a dodecahedron I'm holding up now. And in the middle, of it, it's got 12 sides to it. And in the middle of that is the 13th state. And the 13th state is the ascension state. Mm. And it's within each of us. Mm. Um, um, but I realized that uh, the, the tarot of understanding is the, th is, the, is the manual of how you access it. And uh, thanks to you, Louise, I, I was going to ask, how much should I put into this book? And I said everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly this got telegraphed to me back in uh, 2010 when I'd, I'd written Flavor of Thoughts and Planes of Being. And I had this um, uh, medium giving me a message. Martina gave me this message um, about the next book I should uh, create. And it was like, uh, tell him to finish the trilogy first, I was told. Finish the trilogy because this is the one that everyone needs to read. But my sense was I wasn't ready to write it then and the world wasn't ready for it then. But yeah. almost like this this tiredness that the last two years has given everybody mm -hmm. has actually created this awareness that there must be an answer out there mm -hmm. and it's at our fingertips. And sometimes we think, oh, it's down to someone else to provide it and we someone else can do this. We, we'd be looking to our governments and to our, our major religions to provide these answers, but it's it's... It's definitely coming from the periphery. I interviewed two um, two quantum physicists over lockdown, uh, Armit Goswami, Professor Armit Goswami, and Irvin Laszlo. Um, um, amazing people, amazing souls, and both of them said the solution comes from the periphery. And it's mm -hmm. always good that our governments have failed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they know the answers, and it's good that the the, the next series of answers is going to come from the collective because uh, it's time to stop um the answer coming from elsewhere it comes from from within and um, obviously the, the stuff that we're doing the stuff you might be doing with astrology uh and what have you the stuff that, we, that, that might not be the answer for everybody but just it's a set of tools that some people will pick up yeah. on, they pick up yeah. on it and do something with it and then take it to someone yeah. else but to go back to this yeah. idea of attention tom you've nailed it yeah who i mean dictatorships aside we all live in democracy so how did they get there because mm -hmm. of our indifference you look mm -hmm. at uh, numbers that that people who show up at elections mm -hmm. and it's proportionally lower the federal more people than regional and then local but local mm -hmm. is your water quality your parks your schools your roads mm -hmm. your everything people are not getting engaged and they're turning their back and saying oh let somebody else do it i mean we have a we have a clown as a prime minister right now. His only credential was that he was the son of the best prime minister we ever had. And he was a drama teacher. I mean, mm -hmm. what? You guys have a buffoon in the UK. I don't know um, what your your governments are like, Louisa and, and, and Siri. But we have not yeah. been paying attention. We have not been stepping up. We have not asked that question, how can I help when somebody else is doing it? You know, and I think that's just, I mean, spiritually, um, as a planet, as an evolution, absolutely. 
but it starts right here saying mm -hmm. that idiot's in, in power because I didn't vote or I didn't pay attention to my vote or I didn't care enough about mm -hmm. governance of how my country's run to make my views known before that idiot got into power. Mm -hmm. And I know that's really practical, but it's all part and parcel of this bigger picture of transformation, I think. Well, we had a, great, had a by election in the UK recently, and uh, they overturned a massive majority, all because of the yeah. buffoon you're talking about. And yeah. so, um, my hope is that um, this will, this period will galvanise so many people to say, right now, I want to vote um, the right sort of people in. And you only need the you only need we're talking about the children before you only need the children to be galvanised. who are completely tech savvy, and they will they will tactically vote get get the right people in in the right places and we can end up with within just uh, two or three years some really good governments in the in, in in the world and you only need one or two really good governments to show other people the way to go as well which are obviously more there's women discussion, in there's discussion in canada right now about lowering the voting age to 16. yeah mm -hmm. wow what a change what a change yeah so, i have a comment uh, to all of that oh, sorry <laughs> No, no, but so, so the point being, if we've got any knowledge inside of, of us that's of any use, get it out there in the next year. Mm. Yeah. Whatever format you can get it out. Sorry, 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 you were about to say something very poignant. I've been listening to you now for a long time when staying quiet because it started without, with a you, Louise, saying the light is returning. And boom, I was uh, asked to draw it. And the rest of your messages now has been all about the same thing. So I have a counselor working through me or several. And the message is the light is returning. Uh, make what you want out of what this is. But it, it's the light penetrating into the darkness. And it's a spiritual mm -hmm. color of purple. The overstanding color, Tom. So yeah. this is the message I got for everyone. So I don't have words. This is it. Wonderful. And it's good. Uh, do scan that in and we'll post it underneath the. Uh, the yeah, please. And whoever wants to That's have beautiful. one of these printed, they can do that. So it's a part of this uh, lecture mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And has oh. anyone spotted the three lights above Siri's head? Yeah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, three, two, three. <laughs> exactly so it's all happening the signs just there i was even told this year that um about my time management materials you know the man mindfulness based time management is, is actually it's attention management your tool set it's an attention management toolkit mm -hmm. and where the attention goes is where the energy flows and all that kind of stuff uh and actually and then and where your attention is dragged to is the thing to be done so going back to answering maya's question again what are the uh, 12 unexpected things? The 12 unexpected things are there. You just have to pay attention to them or when they appear, pay attention to yeah. them and then they'll appear. Yeah. I've, I've got something I'd like to add as well um, to Maya's question. Um, I've had this sense kind of arrive in me a few times and yesterday was one of them. Um, right now, we don't necessarily need to know where our beautiful talents need to go. Um I do agree with Suzanne that, you know, we're all standing up and showing up in our worlds right now. And I think that's actually all that's required is that we show up in our, in our different and unusual and also similar ways. Um, it's important that we show up in our intention and, and have the intention that we are adding something good to the environment that we all live in, you know, the, the, whether it's etheric or physical, um, but we don't necessarily need to know what changes need to occur um, and my sense right now, I've been updating charts for people it, and um, and like writing the dates of the next readings I'm doing. And I realize I keep stopping. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm pausing between May, uh, March and May. And at some level, psychically, I can't get beyond March or May. And I started to think, oh, gosh, maybe I'm going to pass away or something <laughs> in that time and I can't see beyond it. But I don't think that's it. Um but I think we are going through a collective change at some point early next year. Um, and my sense is all we need to do right now is notice what we want to be contributing. And it might not all come together right now, 
But as more and more people are standing and showing up in their world in the way that they are, at some point, it's all going to click. And it doesn't need to click right now. We just need to wow. practice our skills because when it does, like if, if we were to start making these plans and I say, well, Tom, you and I work well together in this way and I and yeah. Siri, we've yet to work together. Let's do this. If we start making these plans, by that time that date comes along, it's already going to be outdated um, and, and it, it, it won't be fit for purpose. What we're planning right now is fit for purpose in the moment that we're doing it. And so actually just... Just know your intention because when the time is right, we are all going to come together and we're going to all, all of a sudden marvel over how all of our intentions are slotting together. Now, and interesting. Well, away. I've brought two things to my attention. Which is, first is <laughs> my attention was drawn to the fact there's a comments button in this interface and there were nine comments. So I've got to look at the comments. So, <laughs> so but thank you, Pamela Collard, for making uh, oh, this, yeah. uh, this this this. This thank you, Maya, also for being here, and thank you for that wonderful uh, that wonderful question. And there's a couple of other people I can't see their names because you've got to click on something on Facebook so your name comes up. But the other thing that you brought my attention to, uh, Louisa, when you said that uh, was this this shift b between March and April. Mm. And for ages, I've known about the um, the awakening of the Earth consciousness, and I knew mm. it was imminent. And the two things happened when that happened. One, one to one for the Earth consciousness, for, for Mother Earth to become self-aware. That's one of the things we're here for. We're the agent, or we're like a catalyst. At the moment, Mother Earth has this self-awareness through us and the whales and the dolphins and the octopi and all the other animals that have got an amazing consciousness that we don't recognise. But she, she herself is going to become self-aware. And that's when the duality is replaced by the triality. And we've been talk, banging on about the number three, all broadcast and mm -hmm. i didn't i knew it was happening but i didn't know when and in, in the duality what happens is the not thought and the thought coexist and they kind of cancel each other out in the triality the thought just that whatever the thought is actually manifests now the reason we've been kept away from the triality happening for so long because it's bloody dangerous in the wrong hands as whatever mm -hmm. you think will manifest but we're coming to a point when the manifestation can happen safely in the in the right hands uh, and then the and in that you have the, the not thought you have the not thought the thought but also the intention and the attention and uh, is that that manifests not the the fear or the desire if you know what I mean that, that's a bit convoluted and what I mean anyway so that now I, I, I realize it's happening and you just said when it's going to happen uh actually going to be the spring equinox isn't it what oh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 wow wonderful so that's yeah. happening. But also, what's happening when you, when you when you move into the dual when you move into the triality, the duality can still exist. Mm. So it's not like we have this big light that comes down and we 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 all sort of sit in this new place. We'll have we'll have this transition period where there's a lot of awakenedness, but also a lot of people that's still in the awakening phase. Yeah. And I guess to answer going back to to Jade's question again, what can we do for our children? Initiate the triality, yeah. and then hold their hands. And then leave it to them to make it happen. Yeah. The the thing that we always taught our kids was um, find something that you love, figure out a way to get paid for it. And the third piece of that is be prepared to say yes. So further to your point, Tom, we work, you, Louisa, Siri, we work, we do, we create, we move forward. We may not necessarily know what that's going to look like, but we continue to be diligent, pay attention, how can I help? And then when the opportunity comes, be prepared to say yes. And can mm. I share some amazing words from uh, a very wise soul, Pamela Collard in the chat room. Allowing our sovereignty to arise is a beautiful, organic and orgasmic process. Yes. It does not need yeah. to be pushed, it is already happening. So we don't have to do anything about this, this, this shift in March, April. We're just there to observe it and enjoy it and, and, and marvel at it when it all, um, when it all mm. transpires. Wonderful. So I can see these conversations have got to extend into the new year. Give the, and there's lots of angles. I was talking to Siri before we had this conversation because this overstanding project is 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 kind of ours. But I can see that even though you, uh, Louisa and Suzanne, have not been part of the creation of that project, you and indeed um, uh, Pamela and Maya is listening in and other, other people aren't listening in. Uh, I'm going to just widen the scope to say that I think every, um, every one of these uh, broadcasts next year then we should bring other people along to share their overstanding as well. 
because that mm. is kind of the the theme. So right. next year is the year is the year of overstanding, not for anything else, isn't it? Mm. Wonderful. Well, and thanks, well, Louisa, thanks again for reminding me about the number 13 and 333. Three, three. And of course, you know that 333 three, three is my magic number as well. So. Oh, I didn't know that, but oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, what, got, what got me into this world was um, writing 100 Years of Ermintrude. And oh, wrote, yeah. And I wrote it in 33 stanzas. When I did the audio version of it, I made them all 33 seconds long. Then this amazing earth angel, Wendy Salter, uh, said to me afterwards, um, What's your birth date? And I did all the dates of my birth up when they come to 33. <laughs> and, and then when we're doing our Christmas cards this year, we're doing mm -hmm. our Christmas cards this year because we've moved house that we weren't expecting to in the middle of the year. Um, I looked up at Wendy's address. I've only moved about 10 miles away from where she lives. And I thought, well, there's, there's, a, there's again, attention. This amazing earth angel, um, Wendy, I'll, I must get in back in touch with her after a gap of about 12 years now, which is important. Anyway, so listen, thank you, everybody, for all your uh, wisdom throughout the year. It's been absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm wishing everybody, uh, my three guests today, a uh, fantastic Christmas, a uh, wonderful turning point. We're at the turning point right now. Um, uh, and, oh, oh what's, over, what's overturning? I must be something even better about overturning. Wasn't it? So, And uh, great Christmas. Keep away from the, the deadly O virus. It's not that deadly at all. It's just it's only deadly yeah. in your mind. <laughs> <It's only deadly laughs> if, you, if you let it be so, uh, mm. don't let the fear get you. Don't let the bastards get you down. And uh, It seems to affect people that believe in it. It's a bit like Father yeah. Christmas. Well, I think all, all, all dis-ease does that, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it is scary it really is scary you know if you think about it but uh and fear and that's the beautiful thing about the triality we move to this new phase where those things ca can't exist mm -hmm. they have to, and 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 the light overtakes the dark it always will do so uh, I love that it idea. Does. not only uh, not only are we at the age of enlightenment but we're also the the end of endarkenment how about that Oh, yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's all happening soon. So take care, everybody. Thanks for all oh, your no, support no. and assistance That's over the, the, the year. I can't That's believe that I, we started this. Thanks. We started this in January. Twelve of these we've done now. Twelve meditations. Twelve ambient tracks. All that sort of stuff. And I've got to say, thank you to the moon because without you, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Blessings, everyone. Take care. Oh, blessings to everyone. Mm, lots Bye. of love. Love. <laughs>